over 7,000 subscribers. Thank you guys so much. Now let's talk some football. What's going on, everyone? Welcome back in to another episode for Just a Bet Outside. I'm your host, Steven, and we're here to talk some player props in the NFL. That's right. This segment is due for a bounce back after a couple kind of slow weeks. Uh, we started out hot this year, but I feel good about the bets today. Um, so we're going to get some winners for you. We started out 1-0 and on Thursday Night Football with Gabe Davis easily going over 40 and a half receiving yards. So I think that just sets up for good juju this weekend. That's right. Give me some good juju and not juju to the Schuster either. Uh, reminder that our NFL Week 8 game bets are out. They're out every single Wednesday night. So go check those out if that's what you want to bet. Uh, and follow along. I feel a good week coming on. So in this video, we got some research help for you. I got the best and worst defenses mm -hmm. versus the running back position. And then I also am going to talk to teams that have given up the most and the least touchdowns to running backs. So it's all about running backs today. And then we followed up with my three best player props for week eight. I may add another one later. If I do, it'll be in the pinned comments. And then my two favorite anytime touchdown bets. I'm ready to get into it. And it starts with some research. All right, it's time to talk some running backs, guys. Let's talk about the top 10 defenses in regards to rushing yards allowed to running backs only. Seattle Seahawks, my Seattle Seahawks, are leading the league, 339. Just a reminder, some of these teams have had a bye. Some have not. Obviously, you can check that out. Um, but I just wanted to point that out because it does uh, sway the numbers a little bit. But still, these are the top 10 teams. Seahawks, Eagles, Lions, no, uh, no weird stuff about that because we've been talking about those three teams all year. Jaguars, kind of a surprise team, only giving up 417, 49ers, 418. Um, other than that, you know, not really any big surprises. Maybe the Bears at 483. How about that? The Bears in the top 10, least rushing yards given up. So take a screenshot. Hope that helps you out. Get some player props or fantasy or whatever it is. Let's go check out the worst 10 defenses giving up rushing yards to running backs. And it goes down there to number 32. The Denver Broncos at 1,005 yards. The next closest is the New York Giants at 857. Again, some of this is swayed because a team might have played one more game and all that. But, uh, you know, if you're on this bottom 10 year list, you're not very good. Whether you've played six games, seven games, whatever it is, uh, you've just struggled. So the Panthers have struggled with everything, obviously. Steelers surprising 712 rushing yards, not playing good run defense this year. Uh, Dolphins as well. Packers are run funnel defense, but very good against the pass. So, um, yeah, but hopefully this helps. Those are the bottom 10 defenses versus running backs. Now, for you guys that like to talk or, or like to bet some touchdown bets, let's check out the top 10 defenses in regards to the least amount of rushing touchdowns given up to running backs through seven weeks in the NFL. Number one, the Atlanta Falcons. What a defense they have this year. No one saw that coming. They have yet to give up a touchdown to a running back. That is absolutely bonkers to me. Jets one. You can see all these guys. Obviously, we got a lot of ties at two. Um, and then the last two spots are taken up by, let's see, like seven teams giving up three touchdowns. Uh, but yeah, to me, the surprise is the Atlanta Falcons. Eagles, not a surprise. Jets, you know, they're good defense, as are the Saints. Uh, but yeah, I think this is just interesting because some teams give up a lot of passing touchdowns. But when it gets to that red zone, they, they uh, clamp down on the running backs, that's for sure. So let's check out the next page and see which teams have given up the most. Yeah, the page looks a little different because there's teams with ties and everything. But uh, the most, the Carolina Panthers, who suck at pretty much everything, 11 rushing touchdowns. We were talking about two teams in the same division. The Falcons giving up zero to running backs and the Panthers 11. That's wild. Colts struggling to stop the run when it comes to the inside the red zone and by the goal line. They've given up 10. Giants and Broncos both with eight. Uh, Broncos, a lot of that was, you know, that Dolphins game when they scored 150 points. Uh, and then Raiders, Dolphins. And then the five-way tie at five touchdowns given up to running back. So hopefully this helps you guys out. Maybe we'll do run receivers next week or, or have something else to give to you. But uh, just want to give you guys some research help. But now it's time, baby. No more waiting. Let's talk some best bets. All right, let's get right into it. I got three player props before we get into any time touchdowns. And my first best bet is the receiver for the Eagles. And it's not A.J. Brown. Give me Devontae Smith over 51 and a half receiving yards at minus 114 on FanDuel. All right, guys, here we go. Let's talk about this one. Commanders have been absolutely awful versus receivers this year. They've given up the second most receiving yards to wide receivers in the league at 1,337. This is a dream matchup. This is a defense that has given up 125 yards to Drake London, bridges falling down, 230 yards to DJ more or less, 
66 yards to Cortland Sutton and Brandon Johnson. 113 receiving yards to Marvin Mims on two catches. They just get beat on big plays quite a bit. Devontae Smith can do that. I know A.J. Brown has been a beast lately. I get that. His player prop total is around 90. I like Devontae Smith. I think this is a buy low spot. He's had a few blog games lately, to be honest with you, because of uh, A.J. Brown taking over. Uh, but he is due. This guy plays a ton of snaps. We know he's a stud. Um, he had seven catches for 78 yards last game versus the Commanders this season, I think a few weeks back. This former Heisman winner is just too good to be having lines at 51.5. I think I saw 49.5 even on a book, but it was like minus 140. I don't want to put anything to do with that juice. So, um, like I said, I just like it better than A.J. Brown. His prop is too high. Commanders are struggling mightily against wide receivers. These teams played a very high-scoring game last time. Um, all we need is 52 out of Devontae Smith. I think he can do it. So that is my first best bet for NFL Week 8 player props. Let's check out bet number two. All right, this second one is a beautiful kicker prop. That's right. Here we go. Jason Sanders of the Miami Dolphins over two and a half PATs. That's extra points at minus 130 on DraftKings. Yes, this is juiced. And yes, I still absolutely love it. Now. The Dolphins team to or total team touchdowns line is set at three and a half at even money, which means there's a very good chance they could score four touchdowns. I am pretty much taking the team total touchdowns line and moving it down to two and a half because that's what a kicker needs to do after every single touchdown is kick a PAT. Um, now, Sanders is at three plus PATs in five of seven games this season. We know the Dolphins can score a lot. He was three for three versus the Patriots the last time they played in New England. The Dolphins, we know, are one of the top offenses. I've talked about them before. Against really good defenses, they struggle. But against off defenses that are just not that great. Um, and I don't think the Patriots are that great, losing Christian Gonzalez, Matthew Judon, all that. They're a decent defense, but nothing nothing that's going to come in and absolutely shut them down like the Eagles or some of these other better teams. Um, this bet really comes down to whether the Dolphins can score three touchdowns, like I said. And I just can't imagine they haven't. I think they at least get three touchdowns, probably score four more. And then all, and after that, Sanders has to knock it down. He is 30 for 31 in PATs this year in three home games. Just to show you how good, not really he has been, but how good this Dolphins offense has been. He has made 6, 4, and 10 PATs. Yes, the 10 was against that Broncos team when they scored 70. Um, so he scored four, or he's hit four more PATs in all three home games. I only need him to hit three. Um, so I like it. Give me Jason Sanders over two and a half uh, PATs at minus 130. And let's move on to my third and final player prop. All right. I got a little player prop parlay for you. That's right. Say that three times fast. This is going to be a little weird. Kind of like that KCP and Wambanyama bet we just won in the NBA. By the way, three and one night. I'll take it. But we barely lost that 4-0 sweep. Anyways, uh, back to football. Brees Hall, 50 plus rush yards and Desmond Ritter under one and a half passing touchdowns. Put those together, you get minus 110 on DraftKings. Let's start out with Brees Hall, 50 plus yards. The original line or the main line for this is 68 and a half. I'm taking it all the way down to 50 for this parlay. He is facing a Giants defense that has given up the second most rushing yards, as you saw earlier, to running backs. Gave up the 126 rushing yards total to Latavius Murray and James Cook in that game against the Bills. Gave up 151 yards to A-Chan, a -chan, however you want to say that name. 65 rush yards to Mostert on only 10 carries. And 79 yards to my Seattle Seahawk, Kenneth Walker. Brees Hall is one of the best running backs in the league. He got held down last week because he was going against the Eagles, guys. It doesn't matter who you are. The Eagles will shut you down. There's nowhere to run. And he still had 39 yards. He only fell 11 short. He only, um, and he's now facing a bottom three run defense. This is a no-brainer. I think Brees Hall has a huge game, to be honest with you. Um, in the two weeks before he faced the Eagles, he had 177 run yard, rush yards against the Denver Broncos, 56 rush yards on only six carries versus the Chiefs. I think, like I said, he has a huge game. I think he goes over the 68 and a half line. I'm taking it down to 50 to play it safe. The last, the last one. This is a sneaky good one, guys. Now, on its own, this is a little uh, juicy. So Desmond Ritter, under one and a half passing touchdowns. It's about minus 190 the last time I saw it. So that's why I wanted to use it as a parlay piece. He has gone under this in six of seven games this year. The only game he went over this was against the Commanders. Remember, we talked about the Commanders earlier. They suck versus wide receivers and the passing game in general. Commanders have given up the second most pass touchdowns in the league, and that's why he. That's probably a big reason why he got over this. And I know he's not playing the Commanders. So I want to make sure I clarify that. Uh, but that was the only game he went over. 
He is also under in nine of 11 career games. So he's been a quarterback in the NFL for 11 career games. He's gone under one and a half passing touchdowns in nine of those. He has also gone under one and a half passing touchdowns in all five road games of his career. That's right. He sucks on the road. Um, he now faces the Titans, who have only given up six passing touchdowns all season long. The Falcons don't trust Ritter. If you watch the Falcons just play just by the eye test in the red zone and all that, they don't trust them, guys. Let's be honest. Bijan Robinson, they like to get their run game involved, or they just like to kick field goals because they don't score a lot of points. Now, first of all, in order for him to even hit this, the Falcons have to score at least two touchdowns to have a chance at it. And they may not even do that, guys, to be honest with you. They have scored the fewest points in the entire NFL on the road at 9.7 points per game. 9.7 points per game on the road is terrible. 6, 7, and 16 points in those three road games. I mean, guys, if they only score 10 or 13 points, this is a no-brainer. He's obviously going to – he might get zero or one. Uh, but I just don't think there's any way he gets over one and a half. The matchup says it, how he's played in the NFL so far in his career, how he's played on the road. Everything leads to under one and a half pass, passing touchdowns. So put those two together. If you want to make it more juicy, you know, like I said, make Brees Hall go over that 68 and a half or raise it to 60 plus if you can. Uh, but I'm going to play it safe. 50 plus rush yards. Ritter under one and a half passing touchdowns at minus 110 as my final player prop bet. And now let's get into those anytime touchdowns. All right, let's go. I got two anytime touchdowns, and they are both a half unit. Just as a reminder, these can be kind of weird, so let's have some fun with it. I got two big plus money bets and hopefully winners. First one, DJ more or less. We got DJ Moore for a touchdown, a plus 200 on FanDuel. Now, he is playing the worst pass defense in the league, and it's every wide receiver's dream to be going up against the Los Angeles Charger Chargers. They have given up. The nine touchdowns to wide receivers this year, which is the most in the league. So, number one, it's the best matchup you can possibly have for a wide receiver for a touchdown bet. DJ Moore, five touchdowns on the season. He is extremely capable of beating uh, secondaries deep, and there's nobody that allows bigger plays than the Los Angeles Chargers in the secondary. It is ugly. Um, with Bajant last week as the quarterback, he had eight catches, so he's heavily involved. They had good chemistry. I love the odds here, guys. We're talking plus 200 for a guy with five touchdowns in the best matchup there is to score a touchdown. I like it. So give me DJ Moore plus 200 as my first bet, and let's move on to that second one. All right, this final bet is a touchdown parlay. Who doesn't like one of those? Here we go. Raheem Mostert, Isaiah Pacheco, anytime touchdown, plus 181. They each have to get a touchdown for this to hit. This is a two-leg parlay. Let's start out with Raheem Mostert. With A-Chain out now, he is the main man, as you know. But, guys, Mostert is unreal. He has 11 freaking touchdowns. 11, including two touchdowns the last time the Dolphins faced the Patriots. He's a la, kind of like uh, Christian McCaffrey this year. I'm not going to lie. He's unbelievable. He scored in five of the seven games this year. Um, his odds are around minus 140, minus 150 on their own. You know, if you want to put a pretty penny on that, I don't mind that either. But a little too juicy for me for a touchdown. So I'm going to combine him with Isaiah Pacheco, who is facing the Denver Broncos. They've allowed the third most touchdowns to running backs this season with eight, as we just showed you. Um, Pacheco is going to get a lot of work in this game, guys. I like his over props too, whether it's combo rush receiving or just rushing yards. Um, he has four total touchdowns this year, including four a touchdown of four of the last five games. He can get this on the ground or he can get this through the air. I think he touches the ball probably around 20 times this game, which hopefully is enough. We just need one of those to be a touchdown. So give me Mostert. Give me Pacheco to each score a touchdown at plus 181. Those are our two juicy anytime touchdowns. Again, we only need to hit one of these two to be profitable, but if we hit two, that would be really nice. These are each a half unit for me. So those are my five best bets for right now for week eight. I may add another one later. It'll be in the pinned comments. Let's check out the bets recap. There it is. Short and simple. We're not giving you eight, nine, ten bets. These are the best five that I like. Devontae Smith over 51 and a half receiving yards, minus 114 on FanDuel. And then the kicker play, Jason Sanders of the Dolphins, over two and a half PATs. Those are extra points at minus 130 on DraftKings. And then we got Brees Hall, 50 plus yards. Desmond Ritter, under one and a half passing touchdowns. A little player prop parlay at minus 110. And then we get into some juicy ones. DJ Moore touchdown, plus 200 on FanDuel. And then the anytime touchdown parlay, Raheem Mostert, Isaiah Pacheco to each score touchdown at plus. 181 on FanDuel. Now, if you look on different books and stuff for these touchdown bets, you're going to see uh, a lot of different odds. So make sure to check as many sports books as you can, whether it's checking out Odds Jam, they can give you all the different books, all the different odds. But uh, either way, 
Uh, I've seen a lot of difference in those. So just wanted to point that out. But thank you guys for watching. That was a lot of fun. We got a lot of bets. Man, would it be sweet to just sweep the board on player props, game bets? I just feel something big coming, guys. I really do. So that's what we got. I appreciate it. Over 7,000 subscribers, by the way. Holy crap. Thank you guys so much. Can't do it without you. So hope everyone has a great weekend. We'll talk to you soon.